we just scatter it on the beach. This is a story of modern day exploration. One that ended not how we expected. But to tell properly, we need to back up. You see, a lot of people think we're crazy. They think we throw caution to the wind. They think we gamble with our lives and that of our children. <laughs> you want to give them? You want to give him the ball? You can give him the ball. I'll let you decide for yourself, but at the end of this video, I will ask you this. Are we rational and positive risk takers or gamblers? After sailing three quarters of the way around the world, we find ourselves in Madagascar, a massive island off the east coast of Africa, known for its towering baobab trees, lemurs, and people. And to give this story some context, Madagascar is ranked top five poorest country in the world. The majority of the Malagasy live in extreme poverty, surviving on less than $2 per day. There is disease, chronic malnutrition, lack of sanitation, and little to no health care. They have very little here. Um, I mean, you'll see, you see in the footage, like there's this was it thatch roof and corrugated, you know, metal for the doors and that's it. Um, but they don't seem concerned about how little they have and it's, 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 it's their way of life. It's fine, you know, it works for them. I mean, they want stuff, they want stuff. They would like sunglasses and, you know, some nice foods and hooks and lures and uh, medicine. There was a lady that was sick there, but I mean, other than wanting stuff, they don't seem concerned about sustaining themselves. They have fish, fish and, and rice and... Their diet doesn't have a lot of depth. Like it's fish, coconut, ri rice? I don't even know. Yeah, rice. Rice. And manioc. What's manioc? Is it not a root? Know. And then they had those big um, like breadfruit type things. Breadfruit, yeah. But that's it, I think. And mangoes. This island is full of mangoes. Yeah. They need to go get some. Yeah. For vitamin C. The sexy old man on camera. <laughs> The objective of sailing here is to get further south, far enough south to find a safe weather window to get over to Africa and around the Cape of Good Hope. Yesterday we made landfall in one of the first of the Barren Islands. The name is fitting as there are usually sand spits, barren of vegetation, shade and drinking water. Things have gone well though. We gifted some shirts and hooks as payment and as thank you for allowing us to anchor on their turf. Your land. Oh, I see, okay. Can I give you another gift? Fishing lures and hooks. Okay. <laughs> That's a big one, eh? It's a big one. I don't think I've ever seen one that big. This is all their fishing gear supply. Spare sail right there. Lines, hooks. They even got uh, long lines. Look at long lines. This is a spear. <laughs> Today we're moving once again further south. We're excited to see what we will find. Gotta go fast at all times. There's another boat down there. We have, we're sailing with another boat, and it feels good right here because there are just literally no cruisers right now in Madagascar. Um. And it's nice to have someone else around. It makes you feel less vulnerable, I guess, um, when you're out here. 
But they're sailing over there and you know, once there's two that you're, I mean, you gotta go fast, right? There's always a bit of racing going on. They're ex-racers too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're ex-racers, so they're they're like used to going fast. They'll probably beat us. Totally different boat too, so you know. <laughs> it's fun to have another boat around again. It's been a while since we've been cruising with another boat. That's another fishing line, Lola. That's the hand line. Cool, eh? I'm going to show you, okay? Pull it up like that. So you can push it down and pull it up. Excellent. Now we got to slide this up so it tightens up the drag. Pull it up all the way. Oh, good job. Okay, now try and pull out the... So what are the rest, you may ask? We are here as tourists. A different kind of tourist, but still a tourist. A tourist that travels with their house, a big white boat. Over the past weeks, we sailed down the coast and enjoyed the many interactions thinking, wow, these folks are friendly, respectful, but playful. At times, they hop on board and just sit there, smiling and laughing at the fact that they are on what they see as a mega yacht. What happened there? They were comparing how big they were to you, hey? <laughs> the word was grand petite. <laughs> I'm grand, grand petite. petite. <laughs> we don't speak the language, so often it's a game of feeling each other out. Do you want to trade? What do you need? Without voicing it to each other, we know that we are more or less alone. We are sailing with one other boat, so there is that. But there is no water police, there is no emergency phone number. The Malagasy Coast Guard is hundreds of miles away, and their boats are probably not working. No one is coming, and the disparity in possessions couldn't be greater. So far, so good. Yeah? Is that what you want? Okay. <laughs> With the lead wire, yeah. In here? Okay. If she I don't know. This biscuit. Biscuit. They want a cookie, Willa. You want to give them a cookie? <laughs> they speak Malagasy, but French is like a second language here. But. Le caille. Le caille. We are we caille. Uh, it means like a writing book. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> What's it like waking up to this, Ash? It's excellent. Thank you, really, eh? <laughs> <laughs> They're loitering. <laughs> They've been loitering for us since 4 a.m., uh, pulling nets around us. But the little guy had my little heart because, I don't know, he's just asking for little things, you know? <laughs> we hadn't really prepared like when we, when we went to Papua New Guinea I was we'd gone and bought a whole bunch of stuff for trading when we before we left in Vanuatu in Vanuatu and um, I didn't do that here yeah. I didn't do it at all so that's like our last notebook but we were having discussions the other day which is where do you give and when do you hold back to give to another village you know where how do you divide it up I just don't have an answer to that yeah it's tough um, and my answer was, I always feel that everyone needs it and no one needs it more or less. But um, sometimes you feel like some, some do. It looked okay. It didn't look too, too skinny, but... <laughs> everyone here has been subsistence living for a very long time and uh, they're good at it. They're, but they have very little and yeah. so it's hard to... It's hard to not give, honestly, <laughs> when yeah. we have so much on board. Yeah. We're very lucky. 
We're very privileged. Very lucky. Very, yeah. We're very <laughs> grateful, but we're also very... We have so much to give. Yeah. And it's just that I don't feel like I have enough small things prepared and ready to go. So we're just going to be winging it. And as before, I had a box basically where I could go and like pill it from and just take because I'd purchase things for this trading. So now it's going to be more fun because we're going to be trading from our own personal stash. So that's a little glimpse from a few hundred miles north, not very far, and it gives you a little perspective where we were coming from. Super shy locals coming up and asking for little things, absolutely zero aggression. At this point going forward, it's important to start paying attention to the different demographics and how they behave. There's boys, grown men, elders, and finally women and children. Each has a role to play in the tribe, and it's obvious in how they behave. We're now in super remote area of Madagascar that has almost nothing. No land to cultivate, very little water, and a dwindling fishery as foreign trawlers come in and dredge the sea floor. Remember, there is no judgment here, just observations and compassion. Man, these guys are fit, hey? Yeah. We've arrived at another island <laughs> and uh, they're in need of water so we're running our water maker our desalination plant and uh, we're gonna fill up their uh, jerry jugs for water yeah they can just take the hose onto their boat Ash yeah we Merci. <laughs> De rien. <laughs> we travel to expand our horizons, to experience the world in its entirety. My Malagash lesson, I'm getting better. Bonjour <coughs> means hello is salama. Merci. Misalta. 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 So the pirogues, the, the sailboats, the dows, they're called laka in Malagash. Laka. We travel to shed light on humanity and to draw parallels whenever we can. Sid, est, al west. Yeah, 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 north, north, south. Sid, yeah, 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 yeah. Same. Uh, well, north, south, east, uh, west. <laughs> <laughs> Over the next days, we would have countless visitors to the boat. Some boisterous, some calm. Breakfast in the Barren Islands. Always have company. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had visitors early this morning and uh, Angela brought out some shells and some hair ties and she's tra we're trading and uh, Will has gotten a beautiful necklace. It's pretty, hey? We travel to show our kids how incredibly fortunate they are. <laughs> Thank you, Willa. Uh, that's very nice of you. We're still filling their water tanks. Um, I think the our buddy boat, Rahua, has filled 300 liters worth, so we're probably going to do another 300 liters. Oh! Uh-oh. I think we finally, uh, the water problem at his match. We do have a spare, but that's not good. <laughs> this isn't the great place to lose your water pump. Oma! As our time was coming to a close, we realized there was still a lot of need. So we did one last purge of our closets and let the village know we'd like to distribute all of our unneeded children's clothes evenly. Oh my gosh, I'm like, I keep smelling fish. <laughs> and Ben's like, mine is, oh, it is this. So they've obviously, these are live. That's why they're so beautiful. I said to Ashley a second ago, I need a shower and a shave, I stink. Oh, they're still black inside. Yeah. Um, so we'll just, they need a little more airing out. They need some more time. We've been trying to figure out what our strategy is in terms of giving stuff away, because you could get give everything to like one family or one village or, or whatnot. So I think what we've decided is there's the adolescents, the young guys. Whoa. Then there's the working guys. 
Then there's the children and ladies, and then there's the seniors. So we're kind of categorizing that into those categories. So far, like the first people that came to our boat were the working guys, I'd say, yeah. the fishermen. But it's crazy here because they like, you have to hand it out one at a time. Otherwise it's kind of like a grab fest. And what we find is that, or what, <laughs> It's very, very different from what I'm used to because what I'm used to is like bringing a bag in and just saying, here, this is for you, please share it. And what we're finding here is that they don't share. It's very much, this is mine. <laughs> so I got to hand it out individually, which is pretty funny. So it's kind of hard actually. Okay. It's a lot of pressure. The Polaroid is probably the most popular thing and one of the best gifts that we can give. They just don't have, they don't have photos of themselves, of their families, of the grandparents, of the kids, of anyone. And uh, it's so popular. Grandparents love it, the kids love it, the teenagers really love it. <laughs> But I'm running low on film. I think I've gone through 40 pictures in the last week that we've been here. But it's so much fun and we just love it. Oh, that's good. That's a good one. Whoa, you got them all. You got a stack. You want to give them? You want to give him the ball? You can give him the ball. Things are going pretty well at this point. Everyone is mingling and enjoying each other's culture and toys. I envy their spear guns. They enjoy the Polaroids. But what happens next is explosive and unexpected. For, for Popo? Yeah, okay. So that's a spear for getting the octopus. Bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, eh? I'm I'm so sad because it's all finished. I've used up literally five packages of fifty photos are in this village. Kind of gives you an idea how desperate they are here. They're, uh, it's, it's a full shoving match for clothing. What you don't see off camera is us trying to calm the situation. At one point, we stop and sit everyone down, but immediately things ramp up again. I think that kind of gives you an idea how quickly things can get out of control here. It is uh, the Wild West 
in Madagascar at times. That was absolutely insane. I've never experienced something like that in my life. It's a different way of, um, a different way of dividing things up here that we are not used to. And I think some of the locals probably understand more, some of the older ones, and some of the younger ones are just too aggressive and it really kind of got into like a scary fighting match and we just decided to leave. <laughs> So they're very, very lovely. Many of them are so lovely. Individually, they're absolutely amazing. They're not at all violent. It's just a little bit insane. They desperately want what we have to give, like desperately. We were gonna fly a bunch of kites. Like I have 50 or so kites, but we decided not to, it's just too much. So we're gonna go back to the boat. We'll probably sail away from here tomorrow, tonight. I think really we are gonna just sail away from here tonight. I don't know. I don't have any regrets, I guess. I wish I could have traded some stuff for a spear gun like I thought I would be able to. You could have if you gone back to them. Yeah. But it got crazy at the end and with the kids we just really needed to exit stage left. Yeah. <laughs> All the kids were crying, the local kids were crying too. It was one of those things where it just wasn't healthy for the family. But um, yeah, regrets, not really. I think what I want to leave this video at is that giving is possibly the most selfish thing you can do because it makes you feel really good inside. So it's good to give, it feels good, it's, and it's good for your closet. There's so much less stuff in our closets now. And my fishing tackle box isn't overflowing anymore. It's really good. It feels good. It was awesome because we had to take everything out of our boat to get them. So now if we get pinned down on Bazarutu, I have like this much olive oil left and that's okay. <laughs> we'll find something else to use. But I've given away all the oil, all my, you know, all my extra dry goods that I could. And all our clothes, like it's really cool. Like to it's have, amazing. Oh, give away our nice clothing. Like I gave away Lululemon shorts, Lululemon t-shirts, and Lululemon yeah. tank tops, like because I like Lululemon. Um, I gave away kids' clothes that they were still wearing. <laughs> One point, and I don't know how accurate it is, is that we are cruising through here with two very little children. How many other cruisers come through here with little children? Children and have children's clothes to give. Oh, they were so appreciative of that. They really liked it. I think they were like bartering for it. Like they would, someone would go and like get it and then it seemed like other kids were wearing the, you yeah. get to know them a little bit. And like, I don't know if they're giving them away because they're quite protective of it as you saw. So maybe they're like trading in amongst themselves for things. Like it's kind of one of those Who things. Knows? Like, we don't know what this tribe <laughs> is I've got all like. these theories. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we'll leave it there for you guys tonight. Uh, we are off on an epic sail over to the continent of Africa. Uh, do uh, follow us uh, if you enjoy our content. Otherwise, sayonara. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>